In this video, we're going to be looking at unpacking and defeating different commercial and custom packers. So we're going to be looking at two pieces of malware, specifically flawed AMI and Ramnet. We're going to be looking at unpacking those different samples and defeating the custom packers that the malware authors have written. And then we're going to be looking at a Delphi banker that has been packed with VM Protect, which is a well-known commercial packer. And then we're going to be looking at a sample that's packed with PE Compact, or at least it was labeled with being packed with that, which is also another commercial packer. And then finally, we're going to look at unpacking a legitimate piece of software, although it was labeled as malicious. But we're going to be looking at unpacking that, which is packed with another commercial packer known as AS Pack. So we're going to be going through the ways that I use to unpack these different samples and any tips and tricks I use. So putting breakpoints on different calls, for example, and how some packers function. So if you like to see more videos like this, leave a like, subscribe. So we're going to start off quite simple by looking at a sample of flawed AMI and this is a remote access tool that has been quite common recently. Um, in this case we have a version that's packed so what we can do is we can use a tool called PID to see if it's able to detect any packers in there and as you can see it's just saying Microsoft Visual C so we can assume that this is probably a custom packer. So what we want to do is we want to open it up in IDA Pro so I'm using the free version here and this will allow us to get an idea of what's going on in the executable if we can find any places where it might transfer execution over to the packer so any calls to regions of memory or D words or registers for example so what I like to do is I always like to look right at the bottom for any calls to these different registers or regions of memory mainly because if you have a packer it's most likely that it's going to transfer execution at the end before it exits rather than right at the top. So in this case, we see it's calling exit here, calls get module handle. So this is basically getting a handle to the current module, I guess, just from looking at it. And it pushes that handle as the argument for this function call. So taking a look at the call, let's just go down all the way to the bottom. There's quite a lot of stuff here. Uh, so here we see the return. So what we're looking for is a call uh, to anything. So we can see there are these two calls here. Check down here so if this is anything. It doesn't really look like there's anything here. This looks like some sort of uh, unpacking loop. So if we then go into this function here, and we can see there's a call to virtual allocate here, which is quite interesting as this looks like where the unpacked code is being allocated into. So from what I guess from looking at this is it allocates region of memory, unpacks a piece of unpacking code into this region of memory. It will then jump to that region of memory and execute the unpacked code there. And that section of unpacked code will then unpack the actual executable into memory and potentially overwrite the original executable, if that makes any sense. So it calls virtual allocate here and move the address into variable underscore 6c. That's then moved into EDX here, and EDX is moved into variable 68. Let's see where that's used. Let's keep scrolling down. And as you can see, it's calling variable 68, which, as I've just shown you, is the allocated region of memory. So in that case, now we have an idea of where to look. If we open up x32 debug, and open up the sample, we can jump to user code and what we want to do is we want to get the address of this function here so let's hit space and we can view the assembly so we're looking at this address to put a breakpoint on so in x32 debug do control g and remove the last four values and put 153f 153f and as you can see in this case that's not the correct thing so let's just change the six to a zero and here we can see there's ebp minus 68 which is being called so put a breakpoint on that and just run to it so as you can see we've hit the breakpoint and right click follow and dump we can see this is a different region memory and because it's quite small we can assume that it's going to unpack an executable and then overwrite the original process potentially so let's step into this with F7. So stepping into this, we can see there's clearly stack strings being used here. So we can assume that, you know, these will be imported by the unpacking code to execute. So we can see virtual allocate here. So what we want to do is we want to put a breakpoint on 
virtual allocate and there's also virtual protect here so there's definitely a chance that this is performing self-injection so if we look through this unpacking stub we can see if we can find any calls to a register because as you can see here it's calling d words like here we can see d word uh, a pointer to ebp minus 38 and this is actually from what i've seen before uh, this is actually calling virtual allocate because we can see the different values of being pushed and stuff like that uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look for a specific call to a register or a jump to the register just keep going down and as you can see here there's a call to EBP minus 54 let's see is this call in the URLs I don't think so it's put is moving EAX into it so we can put a breakpoint on there but let's execute the debugger we call virtual allocate follow and dump virtual allocate again and as you can see here we have the executable in memory and so what we're going to want to do quickly just to make sure that it is its own executable and not this executable here because you can use hex editor so let's move flawed ami into there and by looking at the header we can see there are definitely differences to it so we can assume that this is the sample of flawed ami so what we're going to want to do is we're going to right click follow in memory map right click again dump memory to file and we're going to dump to the desktop and because we haven't executed it we shouldn't need to unmap it so if we use pbear and we drag it into here we should be able to see all of the exports and imports yep so if we actually executed this so let's actually just let's step into it so now this is executing the region memory it looks like so if we view the strings it is quite clear that this is definitely unpacked and we can actually see that's where is it yeah we can see mentions to the name which is flawed ami we can see there are actually mentions to the rat itself uh, so we can assume that this is definitely unpacked so if we're going to dump it from execution here i typically like to use process hacker we're going to need to run it as administrator and we're going to double click go into memory and because it's the uh, it's basically I've written itself it looks like we can go into find the original executable where is that this one here and we're going to want to right click save to desktop save it like that we can close that off close it off and if we open it up in PE you'll notice the exports or the import sorry haven't been resolved and this is because it's mapped into memory. So we're gonna to wanna to unmap it. So if we go to section headers and change the raw address to match the virtual address. So let's just change that. 60. And then 97. So now if we look at the imports, we can see the imports have all been resolved. The exports still says server.exe. We've got resources. So there seems to be two binaries or something inside the resources. And so we basically can then go from here. So you can either dump it before it's being executed and you have pretty much everything set for you, or you can dump it during execution and then you just have to unmap it. So what you gotta do from there is just change the raw size to match correctly. So 60, 000, 000 minus 1000 would equal this raw size here. And then what we can do is we can right click and save executable as and you can start analyzing your sample pretty much immediately see i can't drag it into there go desktop and all files so we're looking for this one go to user code and as you can see this is the entry point we've got all the strings here all the strings that are meant to be here and basically you can start analyzing the sample then and there so that's how to unpack this sample of flawed ami so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be looking at a packed ramnet dropper that will drop the ramnet banking trojan to the desktop and this is in fact packed as well so we're going to be looking at how to unpack it so once we've unpacked this dropper we're going to be looking at bm protected binary we're going to be looking at a p compact packed binary as well as an as pack packed binary and that will pretty much conclude the video